Okay. What's the Taylor series for the sine function? Use the name. Huh? Use the name. Taylor series for sine function. Okay, well, if you don't understand Taylor series, review it. Yeah, we're only using Taylor series for sine, cosine, and exponential functions, pretty much. And until, you know, if you, one unfortunate thing is that for some reason people have been leaving series solutions out of differential equations courses. Inconceivable to me because it's really kind of an easy technique, but, you know, notation is, is really the only problem with it. Uh, don't, don't, don't know why people are doing that, but they are. Uh, and some of them have much better minds than mine. Uh, people that make those decisions are people that have serious mathematical knowledge, serious universities. So I assume there's a good reason for it, but I like it. <laughs> okay. I defer to their judgment. Um, so we'll do what we do. Uh, okay. So, well, first of all, just to I think we need the exponential too. Now, these are things you've really got to know. And you should always be able to write down Taylor series for the exponential. Okay? Now the Taylor series, <laughs> we'll make that E into a C. <laughs> okay? For the cosine, starts out like this. Okay? And for the sign, So actually I'm going to write out a couple more terms for e to the t, so I'm covering at least these terms. Now does anything strike you? What's the relationship between this and these? Or what's the relationship between this and this? Just look at the e to the t and the cosine of t. What do you see? I mean, it's skipping every second term. Yeah, you have only even powers, right? What else? Flipping signs. Yeah, sign changes with every one, right? No, so that should be a negative f of the t to the fourth. Well, you're adding whatever the rest of okay. the terms are, and if the next one's yeah. negative, then you're going to have a minus. Okay. Sorry, that was for... But if I put a minus there, you're going to think all the rest of them are minus. <laughs> okay? All right. Maybe I shouldn't have put anything there, but that wouldn't have been right either. Okay? There's no really ideal way to do that. Uh, unless you just write the general term, which is... t to the 2k over times negative 1 I leave myself room to write the negative 1 negative 1 raised to a power that makes this thing negative every other k, right? So if k is 0 here and 1 here and 2 here, okay, well when k is 1, this should be negative, right? 
So we get that if we make negative 1 to the k. And this would be negative 1 to the k plus 1 t to the 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. So if k equals 0, you got t to the 1, which is this. And you got just, uh, wait a minute, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, yeah, you got 1 factorial, it's okay. And if k is 1, then this is t cubed, and this is 3 factorial, and this is negative 1 to the uh, 1 plus uh, I think I've got the wrong thing here because k is 0 it gives you 0 yeah okay just to the k here so. okay um, and my k I don't really completely like that's zero, that's one, that's okay. K is zero, those work, and this works. So K is one, you get a negative, you get three, yeah, that works. Okay? A little bit slow. Okay. Now, you don't really need that, but, you know, here, of course, your general term is T to the That'll be confusing. Right, 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 t to the k over k factorial. So the symbols don't really match, and you, know, you don't really want to think about that too much. Except you do want to think about the fact that you got to write the general term of a sequence. Okay, something hopefully you learn to do in calculus. Because it's part of the course. Okay. Anyhow, the thing that should strike you is then that every one of these terms appears down here in one or the other. Every other term appears in the cosine, and the remaining terms appear in the sine. And the other thing is that the sines reverse. Okay? Okay. So this implies that e to the i T equals cosine of T plus I sine of T. Completely obvious, right? No. <laughs> I mean, it really is. It, it, it's not deep at all once you see it, but you got to write it out and work it out. Okay? So what is e to the i t? Clearly, it's this, right? Okay. Well, okay, so that's one plus I T. Now, what do you get when you square I T? I being the square root of negative one. Yeah. Well, no, you square i t, you do get a negative 1 from i squared, but you also got that t squared on there, right? So the square of i t is negative t squared then, because i is being squared. Okay, again, that's a good answer. You left something off. Okay, and then it's minus or plus. Noted. 
okay? I cubed is I squared times I, which is negative 1 times I, right? Now, you, you should know about the powers of I. If you don't go back to where you did quadratic equations and, or, or complex numbers and, and, you know, spend 10 minutes on it. Maybe dividing complex numbers, dividing by a complex number, something you should know. It might take you another 10 minutes. Okay? You got to multiply by the complex conjugate and do all that stuff. Okay, anyhow. Um, okay. So that's the way the thing works out. I'm going to ask you to write it out yourself in detail with all the steps so that unlike typical differential equations class, two-thirds of the people get to the end and don't know why this is. Okay? It's a good exercise, simple exercise in the notation for series and um, And it's very important in and of itself. Okay? So we have cosine of t. Do you see the series for cosine of t hiding within this? What's the first term in the series for cosine of t? One, right? You see one down here? Yep. Then we got negative t squared over 2 factorial. Do you see it? And then we got plus t to the fourth over 4 factorial, which is what you get if you do, you know, the fourth power of i t. Well, i to the fourth is 1, so you're going to get a t to the fourth over, three fact, uh, over 4 factorial. Okay? So there's our cosine. And whatever's left, it better be our sign. So we're just going to circle it in faith that I actually did this correctly after a couple of little errors. Okay, and do you see the sign in this? Is it there? Is it always going to be there? Well, I'll also ask you to reason out why that'll be. Okay? Just based on the way powers of I behave. You got i, you got negative 1, you got negative 1 i, you got 1. And then it repeats. Okay? Well, you understand that when you solve one of these equations, and get the r, you could get complex and imaginary numbers, right? Which means that sines and cosines can easily come out of these equations along with exponentials and even combinations of sines and cosines and exponentials. A multiple of an exponential by a sine or a cosine. Okay? Now, I'll probably put a couple of problems on there that just kind of make that obvious. Just write them out, do the algebra. You got it. Okay? And once you've got that, then you're functionally literate, okay, with second-order equations on the third day of the course. But functionally literate, that means you can sort of talk intelligently about them, but you're not necessarily an expert, okay? And then we make you an expert later on the course. Are you psyched? Ready for this? <laughs> okay. It's neat. Neat to know this.